I think one of the first questions you would ask yourself about what is the progressive uh, youth alliance? Or who is the progressive youth alliance? Or which structures are the progressive youth alliance? Um, but even before we get to that question, I must just stipulate that the progressive youth alliance is not just a paper alliance. Neither is it not something that was just tabled uh, uh, briefly on, on a paper in a particular Congress to say, nah, now we're forming the Progressive Youth Alliance. The Progressive Youth Alliance is an organism of the struggle itself, for that matter. Um, I remember even Owar Tambo is quoted in the 60th anniversary of the SACP in saying that it is the living organism within in the struggle. So it is not just because merely there is an ANC and an SACP in existence, and therefore there shall be a progressive youth alliance. So the existence of the progressive youth alliance is from the womb of the revolutionary tripartite alliance. It is there in the womb of the tripartite alliance. And, and I'm sure we are aware of what the tripartite alliance is. So it forms part of the historic Congress Alliance and, and it finds itself as the broader component and, and the, in its existence is drawn back from the Congress Alliance. <clears throat> but how did it come into existence? Well, part and parcel of the history of the Progressive Youth uh, Alliance is the existence of Psycho. Psycho is the South African Youth Congress, which was formed um, in 1987. But its existence in terms of activity can be drawn back more than that. But its formal formation was in 1987. The, 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 the establishment, or rather the existence of Psycho, was primarily because of the Congress of the, South African, of the South African Students, which is now termed as COSAS. Back in the days when the, the majority of the organizations were banned, part and parcel of the people who were active in running, or rather in, in, the, in the struggle, it was young people, and particularly COSAS. And COSAS essentially tried to mobilize all young people under one particular banner. Then, by then, uh, even though we track the existence of the ANC Youth League back to 1944, but, we, but by then in 1987, the Youth League even was banned. So what COSAS did then, or the majority of young people under the banner of COSAS did in 1982, was to find a way to essentially try and harness and unite, provide cohesion in the struggle of youth and the community, and fundamentally to close the void created by the banishment, to provide a strategic leadership to young people. But this it wanted to do through the South African Youth Congress. And as I said, and at this stage, most of the structures of the liberation movement were banned, and, were un and some of them were un operating underground. So Psycho was an umbrella of the organization of all progressive youth formations in the country. And it was majorly uh, uh, affiliated to the United Democratic uh, Front, which is known as, as, as the UDF, which was essentially led by the ANC. But as we know, because the ANC was banned, therefore it was UDF that operated um, I, I know here in the province, part of the leaders who were key in, in, in UDF, particularly in Saiko, it was uh, people like um, um, the former minister, Dipuo Peters. If you can go back into the history of Saiko, into the history of UDF, you will find uh, there in the core business of, 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 uh, of these organizations. And then in 1990, when political organizations went unbanned and PSYCOP started to become irrelevant, including UDF, 
they were no longer continuing because of the banning. There was still a need for youth formations, particularly under one umbrella to be, to be, to be, to operate rather, not to be. And um, they needed to operate in a form in which they did uh, under cycle. But as I said earlier on, and we are coming, we are still coming to this, but we are just giving a background on to the existence of the Progressive Youth Alliance. These, most of the organizations that are under the Progressive Youth Alliance were already in existence. It was just that at the time, at the, at the majority of them were, 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 were banned. <clears throat> For instance, the formation of COSAS was in 1979, and its key role, it was just to, subs to subs it subscribe to the Congress movement and to the Freedom Charter. The duties of students was to lend and support trade unions and community organizations. For that matter, in 1983, uh, COSAS was the biggest affiliate of, uh, of UDF. Uh, just painting you a picture of the strategic role that COSAS played back in the days. Its, its main responsibility, it was to mobilize young people under the banner of the ANC particularly, and this is important, particularly in secondary um, um, education. SASCO, which was formed in 1991 as a result of the merger of the then racially based organizations in form of NUSAS and SANSCO. This progressive movement, which subscribed to the dialectical connection between campus and, and community struggle, uh, those who, who, have, who have been in SASCO before will always hear yes, uh, comrades in SASCO telling you that we are, members of SAS, we are members of the community before we are students. So there is that uh, 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 connection, dialectical connection between campus and community struggle. So the fight for a transformed quality accessibility, accessible and free education system was fought through SASCO. Its ideological orientation remains till today a Marxist and Leninist um, um, ideological orientation. Its main task was to fight for championing the students' interests, including decent accommodation, safety, and transport, and so on and so forth, including free education these days in our lifetimes, which more or less we can say we have achieved, but needs a, still a radical shift. And then we've got the Young Communist League. The Young Communist League was formed in 1921. The Young Communist League is one of the oldest um, uh, members of the Progressive Youth Alliance. Uh, as that component, it was a component or a youth structure of the Communist Party of South Africa then, which is now the South African Communist Party. But the YCL together with the SACP were banned in 1953. And it was relaunched 50 years later in 2003. So, so the banning of, 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 a, of YCL was way, or rather the formation of YCL was way before the ANC Youth League. But as you can see, after the banning, it took a bit longer for the YCL to be relaunched, only in 2003. So the ideological identity and the program of the YCL was to mainly abolish private ownership and try to create a classless society. And, the, and one of the tasks of the, of the YCL remains the inculcation of Marxist ideas and the creation of a class-conscious youth. And then we've got the, the, the African National Congress Youth League, which is the ANC Youth League, formed in 1944, a youth component of the ANC. Its political genesis is derived from the African National Congress uh, and particularly during the 1943 ANC conference. It was at that conference that young people particularly decided and the ANC decided to have an ANC Youth League. It was, it was there to, to make sure that it tried to form part of a component that transforms and radicalizes the ANC. Uh, the, the ideological genesis of the ANC Youth League has always been that of the progressive African nationalism. It forms part of, it does not uh, deter from that of the ANC. It is, it is in line with that of the ANC. Its twin task 
which is one of the most important uh, 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 roles that it has, is to mobilize the youth under the banner of the ANC and champion the interest of the young people. And SCO by then, SCO is the student uh, Christian organization, was part of the organizations that was part then, particularly then. I see now it, it does not really feature under the Progressive Youth Alliance, but then it played its own role within in the Progressive Youth Alliance. Comrades, allow me to just briefly give you a, 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 a background of what really is the alliance. You know, as I said in the beginning, you cannot speak about the Progressive Youth Alliance while you do not speak about the tripartite alliance. And if you want to draw the ideological background of, of the, the, the Progressive Youth Alliance, you ought to tap into the ideological background of the tripartite alliance. Or else you would have missed an opportunity to grasp the true uh, ideological existence of both the tripartite alliance, but importantly for this session, the Progressive Youth Alliance. In 1920, the Communist International instructed a colonial and a semi-colonial communist organization to forge alliance for the progressive national movements. The path of the collaboration between the communist, the communist organization and the nationalist movements was pursued by countries such as China, India, and now recently South Africa, Maybe it would make sense even why we have BRICS these days. When you look into China, India, historically, and your Brazil, as we move Russia, put in South Africa, you then have your BRICS. But it was because of that communist international uh, colonial uh, agreement that, that existed back then. Because these countries have had unique problems and challenges. The Communist Party of South Africa, which, was, which is now the SACP, formally accepted the Black Republic Thesis of 1928, which advocated for the organic connection between the liberation struggle and the class struggle. The first step towards the concrete building of the alliance is best summarized by the resolution of the Communist Party of South Africa. Then in its conference when it said, and I quote, the party stresses the prime importance of mass organ of labor. The problems of the working class can, be only to, can only be solved by a united front of all workers irrespective of their color. But what is important, what it speaks about, is a result in which there must be practical collaboration between the SACP, the ANC, trade union movement, and many struggles especially within in the, uh, the industrial strikes. Now, what is it that really binds the alliance amongst everything that I've just said now is what we call the, nation, the National Democratic Revolution. In short, it is what we call the NDR. The NDR is nothing but a Marxist concept that emerged from the Second Congress of the Communist International. When you look at its historical beginning, the concept where it is, you will find it within in the Second uh, Congress of the Communist International. The debate was how to conceptualize the working class struggles in con con colonial and semi-colonial countries. I wish there was a word for colonial in Gaza. I would rather name that word than say colonial, um, because this word is very difficult to pronounce. And it has nothing to do with the fact that we were colonized. I've long forgotten about that. But the Communist <clears throat> International recognized the dialectical connection between the national oppression and the class exploitation. So the ANC formally adopted the NDR in its 1969 famous uh, Mukorogoro Conference as its strategic guide and its theoretical tool when it tries to seek and it creates a national democratic society that will be non-racial, non-sexist, and a prosperous and a united uh, organization. Strategy and Tactic Document 2012, which we kept uh, since then, 
amending. We still have now the strategy and tactic document of 2017 and up until, no, no, 2018. So the SACP and COSATU and Vesages to drive this NDR, taken from the concept that a non-capitalist uh, developmental path which laid the basis of building socialism. The Freedom Charter remains the main policy program which brings the alliance partners together. Our common strategic objective is in creation of the National Democratic Society. This necessarily means the full implementation of our program of the Freedom Charter. The ANC as the leader of society and the society must continue to mobilize all motive forces uh, in, um, in generally in society. Now, with that background being, being provided as the main ideological background to the existence of the alliance, where does the youth components come in? And what is the role of each of the partners of, of, the, of, of the Progressive Youth Alliance? And let's start with COSAS. The Congress of the Student Movement remains the basic foundation of the Congress politics. COSAS must build capacity to conscientize its constituency politically, mobilize learners behind the banner of the revolutionary progress forces under the ANC. It should continue to mobilize and advocate for a transformed education system in South Africa and fight for bread and butter uh, issues uh, for, student, for learners, sorry, and uh, whether it is student, uh, learner uh, support or whether it is uh, learner transport systems. And then you've got SASCO, which its clear intention or its role is, should be the leader of the PYA in transformation of higher education. Fight for free quality and compulsory higher education system. Infuse ideas of selflessness and the community, within the community uh, before they become students. Remains the basic foundation of the Congress politics. You, you would find when you mention, when you mention SASCO, you'd always say community. Because one of the four pillars of SASCO is community work, uh, international work, campus work, and policy work. So one of the pillars of the important pillars of it becomes the, 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 the community work. It also has a responsibility to fight for the bread and butter issues of learners, such as student transport, student support material and qualified lecturers, and so on and so forth. The Young Communist League has a huge task of building class consciousness among the youth. The YCL has to remain a communist youth movement with a distinctive future, theoretical training, and ideological uh, clarity. Lead a concerted youth program to negate the values of capitalism such as corruption, corruption, greed, and crime. The Young Communist League has a huge task in building the class consciousness among you, sorry, I'm repeating that. And the YCL has to remain a communist youth movement with a distinctive role, a role of theoretical training and ideological training and, and ideological clarity. It must lead a concerted youth program to negate the values of capitalism. Okay, I'm also repeating that. And what is the role of the ANC Youth League? The role of the ANC Youth League is to remain the leader of the PYA as it unites all progressive youth regardless of their ideology, color, religion, sex, and creed. The ANC Youth League has a fundamental task of ensuring that the PYA is united at all times. The ANC Youth League must lead the struggle for integration of youth in the socio-economic mainstream through policy advocacy. The ANC Youth League should also always ensure that it recruits young people in their majority to be part of the, of the African National Congress. Comrades, in conclusion, what are the current challenges that are facing the, the, the PYA? Lack of programmatic um, initiatives, reducing the political relationship into messages of support. So, so they, they, we don't have any role anymore. We're just called for messages of support, including ourselves. When we have programs, you only find the ANC Youth League uh, or the visa versa, vice versa, the YCL. You, the only role it has is just to make uh, messages of support. The political weakness in the ANC Youth League resulting to a lack of political will to lead the PYA and provide direction. 
And, you know, sadly as it is at times, I remember when I was in Sasko, I would not want to believe that the youth league must lead us as, as the main leader of society. But unfortunately, the ANC Youth League is the, the main leader of the PYA. And if the ANC Youth League is weak, generally the PYA becomes weak. Because the direction and the strength of the PYA is derived from the ANC Youth League. PYA partners are aligning with factional and leadership divisions within the mother bodies, neglecting the interest of the youth in the process. The lack of well-articulated guidelines on the role of each PYA partner at the current epoch. The PYA partners contesting each other on campuses of higher education, of, of higher learning, and, and a typical example recently, that would be, in fact, not recently, um, just recently in our last year or so. So now you would know best. Uh, was one of the examples in the province. But nationally, it is worse. Uh, the ANC Youth League contesting the SASCO, YCL contesting SASCO. When comrades are not deployed by SASCO, they go out and contest under the banner of YCL and the ANC Youth League. A PYA partners neglecting bread and butter issues affecting youth opting to concentrate on in leadership battles. So the, 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 the struggle has been donated to materialistic um, 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 struggles rather than bread and butter issues. Media spats, public and character assassination attacks by PYA partners. We, we just recently we saw a one between uh, YCL and even though psych is not a component of the PYA. But uh, I, what I'm talking about mainly is youth components of youth organizations going at one another. Poor visibility on the ground. The PYA is not on the ground. It is not on the ground at all because it has no political branding. Lack of mechanisms to monitor the performances of the PYA. Deploys in strategic positions such as parliament, exco, NYDA, and psych. Um, by the way, we must say this. Psych is, a, is one of the components where the PYA should deploy its members into. Psych is not in comparison of any structure within in the PYA. It cannot contest even its political, it does not even have a political idea for that matter. It is not a political organization. Leave alone some of the posture that, that you see the attacks on YCL, ANC, Youth League, where it exists. Those are just where we are supposed to deploy our, our, our Progressive Youth Alliance members. Uh, and not as other way around as it appears they will deploy us these days. So the social distance between the Progressive Youth Alliance leaders and youth civil society formations, you know, there's a huge gap between the YCL and the ANC Youth League Courses. There is no social gap that has been covered between the two. No concrete structural political platform for PYA partners resulting in the lack of debates. I'm sure this is one of the first debates we are going to have after a very long time. I know there was a PYA summit last year, I think in Daniel Scale. I'm speaking under correction. Uh, that was one of the few that was there. Comrades, in conclusion, allow me to, to quote President Thabo Mbeki in his closing remarks in 2002 in an alliance summit and he says, over the past years, all manner of tensions have arisen. The relationship has often been marked by the conflict than rather cooperation. I hope we are over that period and we, haven't, and we have learned some lessons. That conflicts, conflict sorry, do not further the revolution. The unity of the alliance is a strategic goal that we need to work on all the time to ensure that we have cohesion to carry out the task we must defend the alliance against sustained offensive i hope you are informed by the understanding that we belong to one movement Amanda. Amanda. Amanda.